The Angry Birds Movie 2 Rewritten Story Movie owned by Sony, Columbia Pictures, and Rovio Entertainment Rewritten by Tommy Bauer and Super Dog Lover 1 Part 1 Our story begins as our camera view zooms in close onto the beautiful Bird Island. Bird Island a wondrous place filled with the friendliest birds you could ever meet. Ah, yes, we have been to this island before, but that, my friends, was three years ago, and things have changed since our last visit, and quite a lot, too, as you'll soon see. Ever since they were able to use the slingshot to be launched into the air and destroy Pig City and take back their eggs from King Leonard Mudbeard, the, birds, the Bird Island residents were now using the slingshots as a means of, of transportation to get from one place to another quickly. One of the birds, Alex, put some sugar in his coffee and drank it as he ate a worm that was in the coffee. Mm, that's a good worm right there. Mm. Then Ella and Pinky, a white bird and a pink bird respectively, both passed by Alex in the opposite direction. Hey Alex! How's the commute treating ya? Yeah, I can't complain. That never stumped him before. Right? <laughs> well, we made good time today. She and Pinky both landed on a bullseye trampoline, making it to a house. Matilda pointed to a billboard of red as she, Violet, and some other birds got into a slingshot. Red was one of my students! They all took off from the slingshot into the air. Hmm, said Hal as, as he read a, a newspaper. Not sure about the dabbing, though! She was pointing to another billboard of red dabbing. They, too, landed on a bullseye trampoline and went on their way. Mom, Mom, did you get my picture? Asked Jake as he as he did the same dabbing pose Red did on the billboard. Well, this is our stop, said the hug trader as he was flying through the air with three other birds. He and Stella, along with Stella's younger sister Fuchsia, both grabbed onto the lamppost, and Stella and Fuchsia both made it safely to their apple store, just as Stella flipped the sign from close to open. Perfect landing! We see a group of hatchlings, including Jay and Jim, in the sky being launched by the slingshot on their way to school and singing a song. Birds in the sky fly through the air all the way there. Soon they arrived at the elementary school. Today, we're going to learn about how Red saved the eggs. Yay! I love Red! At the beach, birds were having a great time building sandcastles, sunbathing, and playing in the ocean. But one little bird, Indigo, was searching for a certain bird. And his two best friends, a brown bird named Fly and a pale golden bird named Zack, we're helping him. Dad! Where are you, Dad? Yo, Red, where are you, man? He's gotta be here somewhere. Then they came over to a pink hatchling named Zoe and a green hatchling named Vivi, who were making a sandcastle together. Hey, Zoe! Hello, Vivi! How have you two seen my dad? Nope. We haven't seen Red. Oh, but he promised he'd be here. He said uh, he'd let me help him on duty today. At that moment, Red popped his head out of, from under the sandcastle out of the sand. Huh? Oh, Dad, there you are. Oh, good. Here you are, Indigo, just in time. Bomb, anything from Piggy Island? Bomb popped out of the sand with Zoe on top of him. Nope. Chuck, anything to the north? Ah! Nope, nothing. What's that? 
Vivi asked, pointing up. Uh-oh. Red grabbed Chuck's binoculars and looked through them. <gasps> oh, no! A pie was flying through the air straight towards them. Incoming pie! It's coming straight for us! Oh, jeez! What do we do? Only one thing we can do! Duck! And the three adult birds ducked back into the sand while the three kid birds ducked and covered their heads as Zoe and Vivi ran off. A mallard duck sat up, thinking he heard his name being called. What? Then the pie flew into the duck's face with a splat. Ah! I got a pie over my face! Hey, sorry, buddy. Sorry, Mr. Mallard. Red groaned as he looked through the binoculars again, and there in a the distance on the other side of the ocean on Piggy Island was King Leonard Mudbeard, his new female assistant, Courtney, and many other green pigs celebrating. The only green pig who wasn't cheering was Leonard's three-year-old daughter, Princess Penelope Mudbeard, Penny for short, who just looked down sadly at the ground. Those pigs are gonna pay for our lunches! Huh? Uh, what? Uh, because of our hunger to give them a taste of their own quesadillas! Red gave Bomb a look that said, Seriously? What? Ooh, <laughs> I smell a prank war! We see one group of birds about to use the slingshot when... <gasps> it's Red! A hatchling named Beatrice said. I'm sorry, guys. We're taking over the blue line. Official business. Of course. Anything for you, Red. So Red, Chuck, and Bomb, along with Indigo, Fly, and Zack, started to pull back on the rubber band when... Hey, Red! Isn't it funny how nobody liked you until you saved Bird Island? But now we all love you! <laughs> Thanks so much for bringing that up. Okay, ready? Three, two, two! Bomb, you say one. Oh, right. One! They fired a giant bottle of hot sauce at Piggy Island. One pig was about to eat a taco and called to the waiter, Yoo-hoo! Hot sauce, please! Thwack! The hot sauce bottle crashed into him. Yeah! Got him! Boosh! Yeah! Red! 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 The birds chanted and cheered. Thank you! Thank you very much! Ooh! Ooh! I really want the red one! The red one! Aha! Baloney! The kind bird kind the, the mind bird kindly gave one of the red balloons to Beatrice. Meanwhile, Leonard held up a gigantic magnifying glass toward the sun. <laughs> That's it. A little bit higher. Courtney held the sling held the mag the giant magnifying glass higher. The sun reflected off the magnifying glass, creating a very bright ray that was hot enough to pop the balloons. <laughs> <laughs> Beatrice and the mime started to cry. They ray also directed on a bouncy castle where several hatchlings were having fun bouncing. The castle burst, sending the hatchlings, including the blues, flying. Red, Chuck, and Bob managed to catch them all. But the hatchlings just started crying. Mess with the hatchlings. He put on some swim goggles. You get the cannonball! Chuck also put on swim goggles. You ready, big guy? Bomb also put on swim goggles. Oh, yeah! You ready, bigger guy? Terrence already wore swim goggles and putting and put corks in his ears. Nyrrr. 
called Zach from, from the ground with a megaphone as he, Kevin, Fly, and Indigo watched from the shore. Then Red, Chuck, Bomb, and Terrence leaped off the diving board and then made a spectacular cannonball into the ocean. <laughs> Fly laughed crazily as he took the megaphone from Zack. Hey! How you like that, you hamheads? <laughs> the cannonball created a giant wave that headed straight for Piggy Island. Why won't you just take a bath? A mother pig scolded her piglet who was all muddy. Why won't you just take a bath? The little piglet stomped around angrily. Then they both got soaked up in the water from the gigantic wave. Back on Bird Island, Sky had just given Jay an ice cream cone made from worms. Jay was just licking it when he noticed something in the sky. Huh? <gasps> Uh-oh, Sky said, backing up as she looked up. The worms that had fallen out of the ice cream cone screamed and tried to get away while still knotted up together. Five piggy blimps were arriving. Ha 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 ha! This might pinch a little! Leonard laughed through a megaphone. Then he, then he dumped hundreds of red crabs onto the beach. Soon, the crabs were beginning to pinch some of the birds. The birds began running away from the crabs. Ah! I can't see! Alex cried as two crabs held his eyelids shut. Catch you later! <laughs> you stupid birds! All poor Penny could do was just look down sadly as she watched the birds getting attacked by the crabs. <sighs> poor birdies. Meanwhile, Hal and Hatch were getting co cornered by crabs. No, please don't! Oh, help! One crab snatched Hal's wallet and took out the dollar bills. <laughs> But Red grabbed him and the wallet. Not on my watch. He threw the crab away. Or mine, Indigo said. Red used Bomb as a rolling ball as he squished the crabs into the sand. Whoop, sorry guys. And Indigo used his wings to cause a small but strong wind blow some, to blow some of the crabs away. This is something he calls wing waves a skill he developed in the past year. Excuse me, sir, but I believe this belongs to you. He put the money back in the wallet and tossed it back to Hal. <gasps> My hero! Oh, thank you, Red! Don't stop. <laughs> I said don't stop. Back on Piggy Island, Leonard was looking through the telescope watching the birds being attacked by the crabs and was laughing so much. But of course, little Penny wasn't laughing. She didn't like seeing the sight of the birds suffering because of them, and it made her very sad. <sighs> Courtney then thought she saw something and tried to get Leonard's attention. Leonard! Got him! Hey, Leonard, Penny, you two should probably... Leonard and Penny turned around. Leonard saw some... Leonard accidentally knocked Courtney over with the telescope. Uh-huh. Leonard looked up at the sky and saw what Courtney had seen. It was coming from a different direction. That's not coming from Bird Island. <gasps> <gasps> Penny hugged her daddy's belly in fear. The giant object crashed onto the beach with a huge splash. The object appeared to be a very big and very round chunk of sparkling crystal blue ice. Uh, 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 what was that, Daddy? 
Penny asked, climbing up further onto her father's big belly. Leonard picked up his daughter and hold her and held her in one arm. I don't know, Penny. What the heck is that? And where did it come from? Leonard looked through a larger lens and saw in the very far distance was a third island, but it was completely surrounded and covered with lots of snow and ice. It also had a huge volcano mountain in the middle with smoke billowing out from its mouth. We're gonna need a bigger slingshot. Dramatic music played as the title screen of the movie appeared. The Angry Birds Movie 2. We then transitioned back to Bird Island. Red was standing on the slingshot looking through binoculars while Indigo, Chuck, Fly, Bomb, Zack, and the three hatchlings, Zoe, Vivi, and Sam Sam, all watched. Another successful day of protecting the island. Great job, guys, he said as he winked at Chuck, Bomb, Indigo, Zack, and Fly. Bomb and Chuck high-fived each other. Ho oh, ho yeah! Boo yeah, baby! Birds win again! Glad to have helped you today, Dad. Zoe, Vivi, and Sam Sam slid f down from one side of the slingshot and landed in Red's arms. Woohoo! You saved us, Red! You're a hero. Ah, what can I say? That's what I do. That's my dad. Now, Red then slid down the ladder and gently put the three hatchlings on the ground. Now, why don't you just go along and... Why don't you just go ahead and run along and keep your big cute eyes peeled for the next pig prank, alright? The three hatchlings ran off happily, but Sam Sam stayed behind. Pigs! Red, Chuck, Bomb, and Indigo and Fly and Zack, and even the crabs in Red's hands all stood stunned and blinked. We're going to get you! Zoe and Vivi both wore green picky snouts and ears as they playfully chased after Sam Sam. <laughs> Adorable. Okay, let's just finish cleaning up the rest of these crabs and then we can move on to... Chuck swiftly cleaned up all the crabs and put them in the recycle bin. Done and done. Then Bomb popped out of the bin, having accidentally been put in there by Chuck. Good thing school's out for us, Fly said. Whoa. Hey, guys, look, Zack pointed. <gasps> Red Indigo, what is that? What the heck? Whatever it is, it's getting closer. Is it a per? Is it a head? He fell out of the bin and looked up with one of the crabs holding on to his beak. What is that? It looks like a big green balloon with something attached to its string. Oh, look it. It seems like some kind of note. What if it's like a love note? What if it's a message in a bottle? Or a genie in a bottle? Red took, had taken the note off the balloon's string. Guys, there's no bottle, so just, you know, stop. What does it say, Dad? Said Indigo, asked Indigo, running up next to him. Red unscrolled the letter as he and Indigo took, uh, looked at it. Dear birds, we humbly request a truce. Can we talk? Love, Leonard. XOXO. A truce? Ho oh, ho, nice try, piggies. News flash. We're not idiots. Then a second note on a balloon hit right on the side of his head. Hey. He unrolled the second note and looked at it. Dear birds, you are idiots, but we are serious about the truce. Indigo looked up and his eyes widened. Uh, Dad, I don't think they're joking. Red looked up and his eyes widened as well. 
they could see a whole bunch of green pig balloons with notes on the strings floating toward Bird Island. And there was even a banner held up that said, Truce. Uh... The other birds of Bird Island all murmured about the green balloons. Mm, mm. Jay jumped up and, and to grab a note attached to a balloon. I got it! He managed to grab one. Suddenly, he got carried away with the balloon. Oh, no! Jay! Sky chased after him. Check it out, everybody! Let me see that. A truce! A truce! A truce with the pigs? A truce! The prep war is over! Finally! At long last! Oh, come on! I mean, yay, a truce. What? No! This is just another one of their pranks. Huh? What? Huh? Chuck had been spinning merrily while holding Bomb up with one hand. Then he stopped and accidentally dropped Bomb onto the sand. This is a huge relief, right? I mean, who else was getting really tired of all the constant pranking and retaliation? Me! This guy! Me too, said Zack as he and Indigo helped Bomb get up. Tired? No, 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 no. Guys, listen. This is a huge opportunity, Dad. We can finally get to do things as a family. Yeah, imagine all the fun things we can do now. I can think of one. You think he'll go? I think we've piqued his interest. No, 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 guys. We are working tirelessly day and night to save the world. Uh, but the world doesn't need saving, Red. Of course they need us. Red? Huh? Chuck sat on a big chair, pretending to be a psychologist. Come here, hun. What are you so afraid of? Afraid of? <laughs> what do I have to be afraid of? We then zoom into one of Red's eyes. We go through Red's memories of being a hatchling and no one playing with him, leaving him all alone and sad. Then we see Red as a teenager and no one dancing with him at the prom. Finally, we see Red as an adult and trying to be friendly to other birds by waving at them, but they all ignored him, leaving him once again sad and alone. We then go back to reality. I'm not afraid of anything, he fibbed. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to write you a prescription with, for one out of fun with your cool friends, especially Chuck. Come on, come with us. What are you talking? Come with you to what? Uh, but we can't tell you because you definitely wouldn't be into it. Then he turned to Indigo and the boys. We'll meet you all later, boys. We're off to a little get-together. Okay, Chuck. See you guys later. Later, dudes. Have fun. And so Indigo, Fly, and Zack left to go play with the other Angry Birds kids as Red, Chuck, and Bomb were slingshotted into the air. But Red did not look happy. Bomb and Chuck both kept making big, goofy smiles at him and laughing. But Red was still not too pleased. 